Good afternoon. Welcome to our very first Choco Facebook Live for the year 2023. Um, I am so excited to be back. I hope that all of you have rested well and that you are energized for a new year, new things, new excitement. Um, I have a very big supporter with me during this live session and Maestro would love, Maestro, kijk eens, of kijk het actief. Maestro would love to wish you all a very happy new year. He's been a great help in the preparation of this. Um, whenever you are watching from, and this is a sincere welcome to all our family, Choco family members across the world, whether it's Switzerland, Ireland, Australia, Scotland, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Botswana, and very importantly, my family, Choco family, right here in South Africa. A warm welcome to all of you. The reason and the objective for these creative sessions is to unleash creativity, to give you the tools to be creative and to be an inspiration. So nothing that I say is cast in stone. I am just here to give inspiration and hopefully you will get busy in creative things because there are so many healing tools in being creative. Today we are going to upcycle this very old piece um, of furniture. It's a chest of drawers. Something that I have done behind the scenes because with the Facebook Live it's actually very difficult to show all the steps. So I need to think what is important in showing. I have sanded off the top. So the top has been sanded as well as the framework of the piece. So I've used a Ryobi mouse sander and for my fellow South Africans you do get these in a battery operating option. So you don't need electricity to sand when you want to sand. So this is actually a very helpful tool because you can with a mouse sander it has a sharp edge so you can actually reach all the grooves, the crevices, and the detail to make sure that your sand work, sanding work is done properly. Sanding is still a tedious job. With charcoal, you don't need to sand anything. Um, I can, you can leave Maestro. He's being very good. Um, Maestro can stay his part of this life. So with charcoal, you don't need to sand. The reason why I have actually sand at the top and the frame is because I want to keep it raw wood. So I don't want to paint it. Now very important when working with charcoal, and just bear with me, the, those of you that do know the steps, everything is water-based, eco-friendly, non-toxic, easy to use. Your surface needs to be grease-free, oil-free. And to achieve that you use power fix fixes lack of thinness or if you're in a different country just test and make sure that the thinness that you use actually works. What the lack of thinness does, so don't use benzene, um, sugar soap, turpentine, um, what the thinness does, it etches the surface and it removes any oiliness or greasiness so that your paint can adhere to the surface. I have, this was, this was done properly, I've used a scotch pad this is also the coarse side of a kitchen sponge. So you find it on the coarse side of a kitchen sponge. And I've actually soaked it in the thinness. I've worn gloves, make sure that there's enough ventilation in my space. And I've scrubbed down this piece on the areas where I don't want to sand, but I do want to paint. So this is the greatest preparation with chocolate. No sanding required, but a thorough clean and wash with lack of thinness. Especially on an old piece like this, where there's... Um, numerous coats of oils and furniture polishes on it. Okay, I was thinking, so that has now been done, and in, in real time, you will now allow a 40 minute drying time for the thinness to evaporate and dry before you can start painting. So while we're waiting for the thinness to evaporate, I'm going to continue to this step. So we are all, all of us that do have children in school are busy, wrapping and covering books, school books. We are busy covering books like crazy people. And I just thought with Choco, the main objective as always is 
to upcycle, to reuse, repurpose. And we all have wrapping paper, brown paper in our homes at this stage. So we're going to be creative with our brown paper, the just normal paper that we cover books with. And I'm going to show you a nice creative way of applying a stencil technique and also then use our paper as a decoupage media. Um, colors that I will use. So thank you for those that were part of the this or that adventure. So on our Facebook page, Choco Paint, and also the St. Francis Potch, the Enoch and Adanfontein page, we have asked to share your opinion. Should we use um, Comfort's Blue or Super Sunette on our furniture piece? Comfort's Blue was the winner, although I'll also sh share some ideas with Super Sunette. Remember, very importantly, is that color is a personal preference. So you will work with a color that suits your style, your decor style in your house, and your personal preference. Um, the, the steps and the techniques will remain the same. I've, I've given a good shake to my chocolate paint, and now I'm going to start. So I have a stencil brush or three available. I have my wrapping paper. I have a chocolate paint stencil, the code 2230-8, and this is what the design looks like. And I'm going to be working with the colors Comforts Blue, Cloud White, Holiday Scarl, Savvy Steffi, and then I'm also going to incorporate um, Super Sunette. I have a small jar here. I'm also going to make use of Super Sunette. And then the technique I'm going to use is inspired by a 13-year-old friend, Mia, from Oyster Bay in the Eastern Cape. So she is so creative with the things that she attempts and creates with Choco Paint. Mia, thank you. Van Asvegen, Mia van Asvegen, thank you for the inspiration. This is a tribute to your creativity. I'm going to start with the color, Holiday Coral. I have my stencil brush, and for those that are new, um, the main technique when doing stencil work is to use very little paint. You don't want the paint to seep in underneath your stencil. So what I do is I use an old rag, I remove excess paint, make sure my stencil, is, stencil brush is nice and dry, and then Due to the fact that I'm working on paper, I won't be, um, it won't be possible to apply masking tape to secure my stencil. So I'll need my free hand to do that. And I'm going to select areas. So I'm working in circular motion. And here and there, so I secure my stencil with my free hand and I press quite hard that the stencil doesn't move. This is actually a very creative stencil technique. So no anxiety is caused by this technique. If you make mistakes, you will see at the end of the day, nothing will be possible, not, nothing will be visible. No errors will be visible. And the lovely thing about chalk, and this is something that I always mention, is that anything can be fixed. And if you're not sure how to fix, we have a lovely supportive community either email support at chocopaint.co.za or join our Facebook group, Choco Creations. Um, both South Africa and Australia at this point, and we are there to assist and make sure that every project that you attempt is a success. So I am doing some holidays, coral dots here and there. Mia, I... Nadine, we have some questions. Okay, we have questions. Okay, while I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do next. And while I'm busy working and doing the technique, Kaylee will read the questions to me and I will reply. So I am going to continue with the same process. Little paint on a stencil brush, 
but now I'm going to work with the colors first the Savvy Steffi and then Comforts Blue in between to cover all the areas. Okay, while I'm doing that, Kaylee's going to ask the questions and I'm going to answer. Yes, Kaylee. Okay, on what are the of the paper work on the blank side or the after side? That is a very valid question. So the question is, on which side of the brown paper do you stencil? The shiny side or the matte side? I stencil on the shiny side because we will actually use the matte side as the, as the area where we are going to stick it to our surface. So stencil on the shiny side of the brown paper. Next question, Kaylee. That will be all for now. Okay, so that's the... Are there any questions that you think, Kaylee, is valid if someone watches the YouTube video that, that they need um, any answers for? I have a question. <laughs> is it hot in the Eastern Cape? It's boiling hot. I am actually boiling where I'm standing here. Please pray with us that rain gets to our area. We have water restrictions at the moment and it's really um, almost unbearable, the heat. Okay, so now I'm going to Comfort's Blue. And as you can see, I'm not doing it perfect. Some areas are open, other areas are covered. Also, once again, depends on you. If you want it perfect, you do it perfect. Um, I think so many times we are concerned about what others think and what will my um, neighbors say if I do it like this. I'm just using an example. Stop worrying wh about what, what others' op opinions are. Do what makes you happy. And part of being creative, it's a creative process. So it's a learning curve. It's also a tool to discover yourself and to discover what are the things that make you happy and what colors are you comfortable with. Okay. Okay, hey, we have another question, but it's not about the paint. Okay. Um, what is your armband Oh, my hat. My bracelet, my bangles were given to me by a, by a friend. Um, but there is actually someone in Mossel Bay, but I can't remember now her details. If she's maybe watching, she can gladly share her details and she does sell them. Okay, now I'm lifting my stencil. Okay, and I am repeating my stencil. I've tried to figure out the repeat pattern of this th this afternoon. So, chalk or paint and the code is facing me and I'm working from the right hand side, my right hand side. And now I move it over to my left hand side and if you start working on a flat, on the edge of the paper where it's actually flat, it's very easy to find the repeat. I think I'm going to struggle now, but the process will make sense. There it is. Okay, don't judge. It's easy if there's a flat, if you start on a, on a straight side and you can just use the edge of the stencil as an indication where you need to move to. The other option is to do a mirror image of your stencil. And that's actually what I'm going to do. Okay. But you will see at the end, it doesn't matter if your repeat isn't perfect. I'm just going to do half of the stencil so that the rest of the process next makes sense. So I do my holiday scarlet or whatever color you prefer. I move to my Savvy Steffi. And that is exactly what Steffi is. If any one of you ever has had a conversation with Steffi from head office, um, you will know that she is a darling. She's helpful. She is savvy. And she can juggle so many balls at once. And that's the, the other thing about Choco that's so unique is we are focused on job creation and empowerment. So the names of the paints are named after real people that has a real story in our lives and our business. 
Okay, next I'm repeating two. I'm continuing with comfort, which is our heat center at the office. Okay, so this is very playful and I'm moving fast, but you can take your time and enjoy the process. I've actually done it earlier today and I'm removing the stencil. Now what I'll be doing next is I'm going to work with Super Sunette next. So for a shadow effect when you do stenciling, your stencil needs to move up or down and left or right, but just marginal. So just a, a little bit, like two and a half to, to three millimeters, I'm actually going to move a bit more so I've cleaned my stencil brush with just a dry rag and I'm moving my stencil about five millimeters up so half a centimeter and five millimeters to my right. I dip my stencil brush in Super Sunette and that's exactly what Sunette is, a superwoman and dry and what I do is I just roughly spread it over my existing stencil work and it doesn't need to be everywhere. So I touch here and there with Super Sunette. This will be a lovely technique to do on a wall, to create a wallpaper pattern um, on a very affordable budget. Okay and I'm removing and I'm continuing with the next one. Okay, that was turned upside down, so let me do that. Just make sure every time if you do twist the stencil around that your stencil is dry. On the other side that you're putting down on, so let me repeat the process, five millimeters up, five millimeters to my, let's do the left, your left, my right, so it actually interacts here that there's not a gap where the shadow effect is repeated. And I'm using Super Sunette again. And I just stencil here and there. So if this is done on paper. It can be applied to a furniture piece as mentioned. And you can have so much fun with it. Okay. So now the stencil effect was applied. Next, I'm going to not even worry where I place the stencil. I'm just going to make sure I work with a clean stencil brush. No water, you don't want the stencil brush to be wet. So I just make sure I clean it properly with a rag. Take some cloud white, dip it. Dip the stencil brush in my cloud white, remove excess very lightly this needs to be very lightly i'm just going to brush with my cloud white and i've just placed my stencil almost in the center of what i've already created and as you can see the other way around I have a beautiful print that looks authentic. No one will know that this was normal brown paper. So this is really dry, dry, dry. And remember, you can use any color. Okay, now that this is done, I'm going to show you what my finished one looks like. And there is pattern, pattern and color. So earlier today, I've done a piece. So there it is. I've just spent some more time on it to make sure that it's more perfect. But this same exact process was followed. Okay. Now I'm going to cut it according to size. So I have done that already. 
because I have cut pieces already. <laughs> Can I just quickly steal your attention for a moment, borrow, the, borrow your attention and just look what's happening next to me. Now this is my biggest supporter and fan. He carries the muffin cloth for me, he brings me the masking tape, he also eats the brushes, the masking tape, the muffin cloth, drinks the paint, paints, paint himself, but he is an avid chocoholic. Okay, I have cut my strips according to size. So what I want to do is I either, and this is also now part of the creative process, apply it on the sides of the drawers or the front of the drawer. But before I can do that, let's share some tips on the painting process. So I still receive numerous questions with regards to foam rollers. So if you had a bad day, don't paint with a foam roller. A foam roller, and you are not allowed to ever repeat me, a foam roller is like a man. It's temperamental, full of nonsense. So you need to know what you do when you're working with a foam roller. Foam rollers are the best tool to use on smaller to medium surfaces, larger surfaces, a mohair roller. So this is what a mohair roller looks like. It has short hair and it gives a beautiful smooth finish to larger flat surfaces. Medium small surfaces, a foam roller, but I'm going to share some tips on the use of a foam roller again. Um, Okay, so the drawers are here. I just need to quickly make space so that we can actually paint them. So the cleaning work was done properly. Um, I have removed the handles. Tip, if you upcycle an old piece of furniture, sometimes it makes a huge impact. By painting and it still keeps some exposed wood, um, I love wood and on, on areas like the top and where you can see the, the actually the, the character of the wood, I like it to, to remain to remain in the raw wood finish. These were the handles that, that were, were on this on the um, item and I did remove it and I am going to replace it with knobs that I found in our St. Francis store. I'm going to start working on this door. Okay, now next step. When you remove drawers from an item, mark them, number them, so that you know exactly how to put them back, because each drawer has its special place where it needs to go to, into. Um, Kaylee, I think I'm going to paint. Will you move back? And then I'm going to move to the front of this unit so that I actually paint there and just walk over my straw for a moment. Okay, next step is when we paint, I always decant, um, especially I have a one litre, I'm never going to finish that one litre on this item. So I, I'm going to have a lot of paint left over. I don't want to work with my applicator, my paintbrush, my foam roller in my paint jar. Because whatever is um, on this surface that can cause any mold build up or um, the paint of being um, contaminated will be transmitted from your paintbrush to, to your paint jar. So what I do is I decant some paint in a paint tray and Helene um, Vermeulen has a lovely tip, she puts some plastic underneath and then you can clean your tray easily afterwards. I didn't have time and thank you to Ignatius from Himansdorf that assisted with the paintwork earlier today. Okay, so I am going to show you how to work with a foam roller. Let's do this. So my paint is evenly, well let me do it with you, I evenly distribute my paint into my roller. So I make sure that there's even paint everywhere. And this is why you have this section on your tray, is to remove any excess paint. Okay. 
even before I'm going to roll, I just notice now that there is some grooves and crevices over here that might not be as easy to, to reach with a roller. And that's why I have a, an enzyme brush with me and very evenly. So this is not a thick coat, it's a thin coat of paint. I'm applying in those grooves and crevices to make sure that I paint evenly and that everything is evenly finished. So very important, every coat of paint is a foundation for the next coat of paint to follow. So make sure whatever you do, that it's done evenly, smoothly and properly, because that will also um, contribute to the success of your project. So if you clean, do it properly. If you paint, do it properly. If you need music to calm you down, switch it on. Something that I must admit, I had a hectic admin start to the new year, and today when I had to start preparing for the Life Crystal Set Open, now you can go and have fun and relax. And I realized, even though I was under pressure to finish in time, this is exactly what happened to me. I relaxed, I, um, I enjoyed the process and, and really breathed a bit. Okay, now I have my foam roller. Now I'm going to show the yes and the no. So if you paint with your roller and you do this, okay, and you roll and you roll and you roll, roughness will occur on your surface because can you see that you have rolled so hard that there's very unevenness on your surface so working with a foam roller is a gentle process i'm going to roll to the top evenly roll back air bubbles appear on my surface and to get rid of those air bubbles, you can either just be patient, don't apply direct air on it, or just evenly roll over it. I'm not pressing hard and I'm not overworking it. And this is my first coat. The air bubbles will disappear as the paint dries and that will give a very even finish. I'm just going to do the same here that everything is done evenly, smoothly and nicely. I'm not pressing hard. I'm not overworking my roller. And this is my first coat of paint. Now to apply my second coat of paint, I'm just gonna remove those um, unevenness there. To now add my second coat of paint. Tip, allow for your first coat of paint to dry properly before you start painting your second coat, else there's also a chance that roughness will occur that it, something will look uneven because if your paint hasn't dried properly you're actually lifting it from the surface that um, where the paint is busy set, setting and gripping okay, I'm going to leave that that it run it's as simple as that okay don't overwork your foam roller and to the men out there I was just making a joke we love you so much okay then next step and I'm going to continue to work here. Okay, so there's just one coat of paint on the side, but I do want to show the process. And I have, okay, so this is a live session. It is very true, sincere, um, and no nonsense attached to it. So these are the sides of my drawers that I do want to add the, the paper to. And I'll show you, I've done it to the front of another drawer. So how am I going to do this? I'm going to do the following. I'm going to, for safety's sake, paint some glaze. So what do I have here in my meat buck? So that there's a flace buck. So the Afrikaans word for all the foreigners out there is fleisbak for the day. This is where we put our braai fleis in. So if you come and visit South Africa, this is a meal you need to have, braai fleis. Um, in my bowl over there, I've mixed three parts clear glaze with one part cooled boiled water. And the reason for, for the cooled boiled water 
is whatever is left over can be stored in an airtight container as tap water will contaminate your product cooled with water won't. Okay, I'm using my foam roller, not the one that I've painted with. This is now one specifically in my clear glaze. And I paint an even coat of clear glaze on my surface. And don't worry if that happens, that is just part of the drying process. I now dip my paper that I've stenciled in my glaze mix, Funkopage, and this is a technique that I've learned from Renal, from, um, where are you from, Renal? Mattel, Peter Maritzburg, I think. Okay, so Renal, thinking of you as I'm doing this, I'm, I've dipped my paper in my glaze. I have cut and measured my paper to size, but I've also cut it a bit bigger. Tip, don't spread the glaze with your dirty hands on the surface, as the paint will come off on your surface. So I'm going to use my clean hand and very patiently press out any air bubbles that can be underneath my paper. Now, you could also have done this straight onto the item. Without the stencil technique, you could have done the stencil technique straight onto the item and not on the paper, but sometimes it's nice to explore. And now, I'm just using my roller. I'm going to squeeze out the excess. So it's still wet. There's not as much glaze in it and I'm just rolling this nicely and evenly onto my surface. Now at any stage, if you want to paint over the paper, you can paint over it. Um, the glaze is water-based as all the other products that we manufacture in the chocolate range. Okay, as you can see, I left some overlaps just to be safe. And once the paper has dried, the glaze actually stiffens the paper. And then you can use sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just sand it off. Let me, um, I'll get it, Kaylee, don't stress. I need the exercise. I'm not going to show it because my paper is still so wet. So tip, allow for your paper to dry well. I'm also working in a well lit space so just make sure that you have removed any air bubbles and you can move your finger over the paper. Just make sure that the paint has dried properly before you do this. I have stenciled about this about an hour ago. Oh, that is stunning. Okay, so once this has dried, the paper will be more stiff and then at a 45 degree angle, you will just remove any excess waste of paper around the areas. Okay, I'm going to move this aside and then show you what the end result looks like of the one that I've done earlier. And there's, uh, and Kaylee, you need to um, instruct me on the light because I don't know what the light looks like through the screen. So this is what the stencil technique looks like on the drawer that we've done earlier. Okay, the last technique that I'll be sharing with you, and this is also optional, is just for this and questions that we've received during the week on how do I make my wood lighter? Quick, you can bear with me for two minutes. This is quick and easy. I just wanna make space. And as always, I will finish the entire item and um, we will post it on our social media pages so that you can see what the end result looks like. So I and Super Sunet, here's where you will be so, um, so important. Please remember, and I'm repeating myself, that color is a personal preference. If you want to use a natural tone, do it. 
Do what makes you happy and colors that you feel comfortable with. I always say, and I'm repeating it again today, we live in eclectic times. There aren't any rules. We can be happy all the time. I've just made a mess here now. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm wetting my wood. Because the next step that I will be doing is I will be washing my wood, give it a lime wash technique, so that it actually just becomes a lit, little more lighter. So, very important to so do this technique. You do, you do need a raw timber, um, raw cement or raw brick surface. So anything raw. I'm now going to use Super Sunet. Just removing the cellophane paper. So this is Super Sunet, the color I'm going to use. I'm really getting a workout here. You don't need to work this messy. I am applying some Super Sunet on a cloth damp cloth for any paint technique. Make sure you have a damp cloth because that just allows the even transition on your surface and the ability to manipulate whatever you are doing. And I am wiping my super cement on my raw wood. So I still have a raw timber look and feel but with just a lighter tinge to it. And I'm working with a grain of the wood. And on the, on the wood, due to the age of it, you can see it was, it's really an old piece. There are imperfections, and that is fine. I will use an artist's brush, make sure I reach the areas there, just to make sure that there's some contrast in the grooves and wipe away in those areas with a damp cloth as well. And this is called lime wash or white wash. And afterwards, I'll apply the clear glaze, the glaze that I've mixed for the paper, with a damp cloth, but only after four hours or longer after application. And that will just protect especially the top. And this is also now being experimental and try, so immediately I can see that it needs some more lightness. So instead of just using Super Sunet, I'm going to repeat the same process, same steps, just by adding a little bit of cloud white as well. Oh, and I've seen so many beautiful things, especially on the Choco Creations page. If you have not joined that page, just do it for your own sanity's sake. They are the most beautiful creations. I am inspired, inspired every time I visit that page. And well done to everyone that shared their entries there or their inspirations and ideas and projects. You are all amazing. Okay, I'm going to repeat this process and I love what I'm already seeing happening on here with just by adding a little bit cloud white and then that cloud white will also be subtly repeated. Um, you will see the repetition on the drawer that I've stenciled. So there will be a repetition of that tone in the drawer and then I have selected these knobs. So there's a variety of knobs um, that I'll use on the, on the item that also works beautifully with both Super Sunet and with Comfort's Blue. Okay, this is me, Mama Choco, with my first inspiration session for 2023. My message to you is to have a blast of a year. Um, make every moment count. Do things that make you happy. Be happy. Um, explore. 
live life to the fullest and thank you for all the amazing support and loyalty. I love you all to bits and I can't wait to grow with you together during the year 2023. This was done with loads of love from me, Nadine Fosler, Aka, Mama Choko, and I can't wait to be back next time. Look after yourself. <laughs>